Army recognition has been invited to the Arcus Techno Days yesterday and today. It means that Arcus intended to show its last innovations, innovations in many different fields, mobility, uh, engines, everything that can be attractive to future development as well as nowadays development, as some models were demonstrated, including the VT4, the new uh, SUV, let's see, of the French army. But just beside me is the VAB Elector. It's a new version of uh, Elgerain, and electric uh, mobility. And this is certainly a field of development that will have a very huge success in the forthcoming years. Arcus is also developing protection innovation. And we mean innovation because there is passive and active protection with this VAB Mark III behind me. And this is absolutely fantastic, unique as a system. Arcus is also developing mobility in uh, Convoys. For convoys, you have one vehicle equipped with a driver, which is remotely piloting all the trucks in a convoy. We also have Jeep, which is equipped for uh, almost autonomous mobility. And the uh, top of the state of the art is the Scarabay. The Scarabay is the top innovation of Arcus. The Scarabay, the vehicle itself, and its trailer, which is absolutely revolutionary. The Arcus VT4 is the new command and liaison vehicle of the French Army. 500 units have already been delivered. Notice that 600 pieces of different parts, modifications, have been brought to the original Ford Everest SUV delivered to Saint-Nazaire, the plant of Arcus where the VT4 are modified and realized before delivery to the French Army. This very day, the 24th of May, the first anniversary of Arcus. Arcus is a new brand, as you know, uh, which uh, took over after Renault Trucks Defense, Panhard and Akmat, which are very old and experienced company. Techno Day uh, 2019 is actually uh, the opportunity for Arcus to showcase uh, all of our innovations in the field of the land defense. Uh, so all what we do in terms of R&D to improve uh, the uh, products and services and of course to to suit the uh, customer demand and the fast evolving world in which we are in. We, we have a different domains in, of research out of which one is the, one maybe the most important is to improve the mobility of the vehicle to allow them to go towards autonomous drive and as you mentioned there are different steps and one step which uh, we demonstrate here is a teleoperation of vehicles which is already available which we of course uh, further improve day by day so that we can actually remote control uh, any kind of vehicles, armored vehicles or non-armored vehicles to go for specific missions such as reconnaissance or why not carrying some systems, weapon systems or observation systems. So this is uh, one of our main research area but we of course have different steps towards uh, full autonomy uh, including allowing vehicles to to go in a convoy without uh, any uh, pilots or even eventually being able to uh, recognize the field and go around uh, in a full autonomous way uh, on the uh, all, all terrain and off-road oper operations. Of the other domain, which is also very important, uh, how to optimize energy consumption, uh, to say it in a very would say broad way. Of course, there are many different solutions, starting with optimizing the energy consumption of the vehicle itself. Here, there are a lot of different things, small things we, we can add to overall target minus 38% in fuel consumption in the existing platform. But then moving even one step forward, we of course think about hybrid drive lines and why not full electric drive line, whether working on batteries and maybe one day on fuel cells. So you see there are many, many different areas where we can first improve the uh, energy uh, consumption and second think about other sources of energy which would allow uh, long, long autonomy and relying less 
on the fossil fuel uh, logistics. I don't know if it's the only solution, but it is a possible solution, provided, of course, that we, we are able to produce hydrogen close to the combat uh, uh, re regions, but then uh, allowing uh, a vehicle for three days of autonomy on full electric uh, uh, vehicles. Of course, the only way today we, we can see is really to fuel it through a fuel cell rather than batteries, which needs to be, of course, uh, recharged. Uh, so we call it uh, actually in French EAC, e Engin d'Allègement au Combat, which is actually a kind of a autonomous electrified trailer, which can be either, of course, working as a trailer, provide also additional power to the, uh, to the, to the convoy, but also uh, act on its own you know, can be left behind by the uh, lead vehicle and then can join him back on a, in a full autonomous way. And that is a way to keep also the size of the reconnaissance vehicle, the Scarabée, uh, limited, you know, to keep its compactness, its, its stealthness, and also to, uh, to allow at the same time to carry more goods, more ammunition, more systems uh, to uh, uh, allow a full, full uh, capacity for the mission. The prototype is going into further steps of development. Now we are really validating and certifying all these different functions. And we uh, expect, of course, to further uh, you know, develop it to make it in a full functional uh, vehicle which can uh, successfully compete for the next uh, tenders, uh, whether it is Fran uh, in France, but also on international markets. So we put a lot of hope on this, uh, on this carabé. So all these capacities, of course, we develop for, the, for our product range, but we have in mind, and we keep in mind, of course, our main customer, existing customer, including France, but also to develop ourselves on export markets. We need to, be, to keep you know, the edge and to be competitive, offering very innovative solutions for the product themselves, but also for the services which go with it and which uh, for us is absolutely you know, bundled with, uh, with the vehicle. So we have, uh, maybe you have seen some innovative service offer, which allow, for example, remote uh, uh, would say servicing of the vehicles also allow uh, more uh, easier communication between uh, between the technical uh, services and the uh, people who are operating the vehicles on the on the front line, as well as, for example, additive uh, printing to print one day some spare parts close to the uh, combat zones. So all this is also some, uh, some activities which we do having in mind and keeping in mind our international customers.